Hey YouTube, it's me coming back real, real quick today. I know it's like back-to-back -back videos. I'm on a roll. Somebody asked for a review slash, I don't know, like not really tutorial, but you know, like showing y'all the foundation that I mentioned in my video yesterday. Now, this one is called the Scott Barnes Cream Foundation, and this one is in the color Topaz. They don't make this anymore. It was discontinued some years ago, and they put it on sale really cheap. But I Googled it, and if you're interested in it, they do have it on um, eBay and Strawberry Net. The color selection isn't huge, huge that they have available, but it does at least cover black women. You know, some just don't even include us. It gives a good amount of coverage. You know, creams you usually think heavier coverage, but it's very lightweight. This is what the color looks like swatched on my finger. And there was one thing that I really liked about it is that the color matched pretty good. See, on my skin. To me, it reminds me of like, what NARS Sheer Glow would be like in a cream. So that's exactly of how light it feel, but it still gives out that glowy effect and everything. Doesn't cake up. It, I think it's more of like a cream to powder type feel with it, but I like it. You know, I brought it a long time ago and I used it, but when it doesn't look good on bumpy skin because I don't know, it's, you know, no foundation, really. You need a good canvas to start off with. And if I have a lot of breakouts, I just don't like how this one looks with it. I have other foundations that I prefer to that one if it's not breaking out, which is why I hadn't used it in a while. But I am not exaggerating. I think I counted yesterday, and I probably have at least 40 high-end foundations. You know, that's not even including drugstore stuff. So I've been trying to go through and try different ones so I'm gonna show you pretty much how I use this and most of my foundation is going the same way so it's nothing special you know I go for a more full coverage so I wanted to show you you know what the before is I have a lot of acne hyperpigmentation from picking at my skin and everything else so I have a lot of situation to cover I don't really have a lot of active bumps per se but I do have a lot of spots to cover. If I keep looking over here, I got a mirror so I could try to do this, see how it goes. And, you know, I'm not good at this tutorial thing, so bear with me. And this is just the wig. I don't have no idea what her name is. I got it from the African hair shop. So I'm sorry. But I'll start the tutorial. And I don't do editing, so this is a good part to insert music or something. And all I'm going to do is just stipple it on, just like I do all foundations. This is the, um, I was about to say, Sonia Kashuk. This is the one by Samantha Chapman. The Real Techniques brush that I mentioned in my favorite things video. That's it's the stippling brush. And I love it. I brought two of them. It holds up good for a washing. It dries fast. You know, it doesn't shed. Now, this particular color, like, it was a tad bit darker than, like, what I would go for. But it wasn't nothing, like, so noticeable that, you know, that it was going to bother me. And I'm trying to use some daylight to get a better um thing. But uh, my chest is just a different, my body's just different colors, you know, if I put it up. So I can't change that. I'm not about to put foundation over my whole body just to make it one color. It's just not me. So and I get comments a lot, you know, like, oh, your body and face different, you know, without any foundation on mine is still different. Now, I already had on um, some eye makeup. Believe it or not, this is the same exact eye makeup I had on last night like not saying the same colors exact same when I took off makeup I just took off face makeup and went to sleep in it and stayed on so that is pretty much stippling I know it probably looked like I used a lot but I was just 
lightly tapping the edges in there and blending and stippling it on and it kind of has a, a orangey brown tint to it like for the color the comparisons you know I said it's closer to is probably probably not as bright as NC 45 I give I'll say it looks like a little bit lighter than Norris Mikhail if you're looking so it's a little darker than Cadiz but lighter than Mikhail and I got an eye booger so, so that's you know the foundation and of course my Kevin Aquan concealer because that's my favorite and I'm just gonna kind of go over some of the marks that I want to go over and get this a little time to sit before I put my smooth operator on and I'm just going over some of the spots that kind of see and I'm gonna put a little bit under my eye I've been using um, a corrector under my eye, and um, so far I've been liking correctors. I'm not using one today, but I've tried the Bobbi Brown Peach Corrector, and um, Diane UK1, she has one up that she said with a Salmon Corrector from Eve Pearl, and I looked that one up, and it looks pretty good. You know, Eve Pearl doesn't look too bad. A little pricey for me not to touch it first, but... If I end up going to the makeup show, hopefully I have it there. So just bear with me real quick. And I usually put on concealer with a brush sometimes too. But And I stick to my same thing that I always do with foundation and concealer is that I'm going to semi-sandwich it in. So not really applying much more product, just kind of mixing in the concealer and foundation so the color goes a little bit better. So, what do y'all think? You know, like I said, it gives pretty decent coverage. The true to color is still a little off on the screen. Well, I guess the sun might be shining too bright. But it still is better than unnatural light, I guess. So, that is it. And I'm going to get my powder ready to set the foundation with now this powder it only has a single opening in the middle which is good in a way because you don't have to worry about you know on like mac pepper palm if you open the whole thing and there goes the alarm hold on i gotta time myself i gotta make it to my significant other's work barbecue and if I don't give myself deadlines, I won't make it. So I'm just going to kind of go all over it. Buff it in a little bit. And this is another real technique. This is a blush brush. But look how big this damn brush is. You know. Okay, it was a little. When you wash it, it gets a little smaller. But still, it's pretty big for what I use for blush. So I love it as a powder brush, though. I had a powder brush, too. But I really like this one from the way it's tapered. And I'm pretty much putting it mostly where I get shiny at, which is my nose on the side of my nose. And I have a smaller brush that I'm going to use for that one to kind of get into the crevices and get rid of creases under my eye for where I just put that concealer on the side of the mouth where I crease at. And this is a MAC 225. I brought this one from the CCO um, a while ago. I'm not sure if I think it's a discontinued brush or maybe it's a pro. I don't know. You know, I've never really looked for it. I was at the CCO and I go crazy in there sometimes and start buying everything. Like, what am I going to do with this big-ass eye brush? Look at this. That's my eye. <laughs> but it works great for this. 
And then for blush, I think I'd go with Sahara again. And this is what Sahara looks like. It's like a terracotta-ish. And I guess I'm going to be using this for blush because I didn't bring another brush up here. I don't feel like getting up. And I'm just going to put some of that on. It has like a nice little orange terracotta ish. But like I said, they make this brush smaller, it'd be great. And I think I'm going to go right on top of the cheeks with a peachier color. And this one is Pantau. And just to kind of brighten up my face some. That is super bright. Don't look that bright on the camera, but trust me. And then going over with my Amon powder and clay one. Just kind of set to give some more um color. Since it has this nice, it's kind of like a um MAC mineralized skin finish. And <laughs> that is the look so again not really a look but it's just showing y'all the foundation so if you have any questions about it or if you like me to do reviews on like more products or something let me know because when i say product junkie i, I really mean product junkie like i can't remember the last time i've had under 2,000 points in my sephora account so I definitely have a lot of stuff. So if there's other foundations you want to see that you're curious about, it's probably a good chance that I have it, you know. So that is it. Good foundation. I may try to come back and see. Like you, well, you see what it looks like at the end of the day. It wears well. It feels light. Like, I don't even feel like I have on foundation, you know. Moving. You know, sometimes it's just you just feel heavy and cakey. And this one does not feel like that at all. It feels airy, powdery. So this one, I definitely give, if I had to rate it, I'll say, I'll probably give it 9 out of 10, you know, for coverage, lightness. Color is probably the only thing. I wish it had more color ranges, but that's it. So Scott Barnes, there you go. Bye, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Need to put on lip gloss.